الحمد لله على فضل والإحسان حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم وتسليم كثيرا أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير حد حد محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر أمور محتثاتها وكل محتثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته كيف حالكم كيف حالكم جميعا يا أيها الإقوى يا أيها الإقوى وأقوات بإذن الله سبحانه وتعالى قد نصل إلى آكر شهر رمضان وشهر مبارك وقد نصل الله سبحانه وتعالى تقبل منا أعمال صالحة وتلاوتنا وصيامنا وقيامنا وجعلنا من الصائمين وصائمات وذاكرين وذاكرات أمين Extending these salutations to our beloved brothers and sisters بإذن الله We are currently approaching the last 10 nights of this blessed month which is the end of the month of Ramadan which inshallah ta'ala hopefully we are able to cover some things um, within the next two days uh, highlighting the importance of the last 10 nights and some of the things that we are encouraged to do from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu from himself and his own actions uh, and so forth like that and highlighting the Laylatul Qadr Nonetheless, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us our righteous actions that we put forth in this blessed month and the recitation of his book, the striving to recite Allah Jalla wa'ala book in this month, the fasting in this month, uh, both the types of fast, fasting physically as well as fasting spiritually. Um, also, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our uh, qiyam, our standing, inshallah ta'ala, in prayer. Seeking Allah Jalla wa'ala forgiveness, His reward, etc. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa to make us of those who truly fast from the men and women and those who truly remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the men and women. And along with that, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase us in ilm. Ilm al nafia Beneficial knowledge and warrisq al And halal, wholesome provisions. And wa'amal al and actions which are accepted. We, Allah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to aid us and give us the strength, inshallah ta'ala. I think the door opens, it's, it's upstairs. Inside the printing room. Inside that middle room, the printing room. Now, so, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to continue to remember him after the month of Ramadan. So we wanted to part with you guys some of one of the aqwal or the statements from um, the Salaf that mentions Man Sama Ramadan wa huwa yuhaddithu nafsahu annahu idha aftara Ramadan alla ya'asillaha daqala jannah. So they say whoever fasts the month of Ramadan and while discoursing with himself, he tells himself that when Ramadan is complete and is done, that I will not disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after this month, then this individual will enter paradise. Without any account or being brought forth or questioned. If a person entered the month of Ramadan, fast the month of Ramadan, telling himself that I will leave and exit this month without disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that individual will enter paradise without being questioned or brought to account. Then the statement continues. وَمَنْ صَامَ Ramadan. يحدث وهو يحدث نفسه أنه إذا أفتر إذا أفتر عصى ربه فصيامه عليه مردود. 
So they says that in whosoever fasts the month of Ramadan, why telling himself, why discoursing with himself, that once he break and once the Ramadan is over, he has the intention to do what? To disobey his Lord. Not to change after the month of Ramadan. And they said, فَصْفُيَامُهُ عَلَيْهِ maradud." Then the fasting which he put forth during that month is rejected. The deeds which he put forth during that month has unraveled. All of the energy that he exerted within that month has unraveled. And I don't think we understand the magnitude of this statement. The magnitude, brothers and sisters, if you don't know, hopefully we can bring it to the forefront. And it's a reminder for myself first and foremost, a reminder to you. That is, the month of Ramadan is a golden opportunity. And it is supposed to set your affairs aright in regards to the rest of the year. Because the previous year, you have done things, made mistakes, so forth. So Allah gave you a month whereby you can make up for that. Henceforth, if you pay attention to the statement of the Prophet ﷺ, where he says, as salat ila salat wa Jumaa ila Jumaa wa Ramadan ila Ramadan to kafir wa'ay. That is what? Sayyati baynahum. Right? That the prayer to the next prayer, the Jumaa to the next Jumaa, the Ramadan to the next Ramadan is an expiation for those sins that has been between them, has been committed between them. In the ulama, they said that the most correct opinion is the minor sins. But nonetheless, notice how it serves as an expiation. So, if you go into this month and you don't have any intentions to become better and to carry on that improvement that you have uh, strove so hard within the month itself and you leave the month and you don't keep that improvement going on, what was the point? It's as if the whole point of Ramadan has missed you. And you had the intention of coming right in and going right back to doing what you was going to do anyway to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then your fast wasn't accepted. Your fast wasn't accepted. فَيْسْوِيَامُهُ عَلَيْهِ مَرَدُودِ As the Aqwal al-Salaf would say. Your fast wasn't accepted because you weren't deceiving Allah. You were deceiving yourself. You understand? It was a golden opportunity for you, not for Allah jalla wa alam. And this is why the Prophet you have to use you can use something just touch the lock and then open up just like I do and, and it open right up and you can grab it um and this is why the Prophet وسلم, he did what he says and he makes it clear that fasting during the month of Ramadan that the individual he mentioned he mentioned in the hadith the Hadith Qudsi That Allah Jalla wa'ala Is not a need وَلَا حَاجَةٌ لِلَّهِ سُبْحَانَ وَتَعَالَىٰ أَنْ يَدَّعُوا طَعَامُهُ وَشَرَابُهُ Allah is not a need Of the person giving up His food and drink That wasn't the purpose That wasn't the reason for it So we ask Allah Jalla wa'ala To allow us to exit this month With the proper intention To keep on striving Like we have been striving So far in this month Like we have striving And whatever We have improved Within this month That we continue To carry that on after the month and whatever we have fall short in within the month Allah Jalla wa ala, subhanahu wa ta'ala um, um, expiate for us our sins inshallah ta'ala and wipe over those things and pardon us for those things inshallah ta'ala nonetheless someone may ask why do the brother go so hard with reminders with constantly teaching and one of the things that I want you guys to know is that I hope by way of this mushahadat or these tatkirat by way of these reminders and by way of these videos that they serve as a tawassu in the law that they serve as a means of getting nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for maqfira for forgiveness because I am in need of all the forgiveness I can so I go hard at these reminders not so I can be seen not so that I can be heard but so that I can Inshallah Ta'ala Use it as a means of Allah forgiving me That I have stood up And remind the people of Allah I remind the people of his book I remind the people of his sunnah And that even if I felt short In regards to carrying those things out Nonetheless I stood forth 
within reminding. So this is a means of tawassal. Alhamdulillah, we're still talking about Ibadur Rahman because this is what we want to be and what we're striving to be become from the Ibadur Rahman. And we have listed a lot of, of the qualities in the sifat of the Ibadur Rahman, the servants of Ar Rahman. And we mentioned that they are humble and what it means to be humble. And we mentioned the fact that not only are they humble, how they are to address those who behave foolishly. Those who are not using the aql, those who are not using what Allah Jalla has given them to reason out things and how to deal with them, how not to engage them if there's no benefit whatsoever associated to it, and how they spend their nights because spending their nights in a certain way prepares them to face the ongoing battles of the next day. It also shows you that they are not just concerned with their physical being, but they also give haq to their spiritual being. And that's something a lot of us don't know. Your nafs, your soul is who you are. Your soul is in an experience within the physical realm. But somehow we think the physical realm is who we are. And the soul takes the back seat. Allah in the Quran addresses your soul. Henceforth, the Prophet as is a coming real salihin. He says, Allah in Allah la yanduru <laughs> ajasadukum. Alright? Allah doesn't look at your bodies. He doesn't look at your clothes. He look at your what? Your kulub wa amali. He look at your heart and he look at your actions. Right? Allah doesn't look at your body. Your body isn't what Allah Jalla is focusing on. Henceforth, the body, what we think is what we need to be worried about. How do I look, Akhay? How do I look, Okhay? You know, everything with the physical world, right? And forgetting about the nafs. So henceforth, when Allah Jalla Allah talks about um, doing things which Allah Subhanahu Allah has prescribed and stayed away from those things, notice how he says, you oppress your soul and not your physical body. Notice how he talks about the nafs. So that's an important thing we need to understand. The qualities of the believers is that they understand that. And we also get an insight from that is that loving yourself is loving your nafs. And what I mean by your nafs, I'm not talking about the nafs of following your hawab. I hope we don't misconfuse me using the term nafs and thinking it's dispraiseworthy. Using the term nafs is not always dispraiseworthy. We're not talking about hawab. We're talking about your soul, your ruh. If you love yourself, then you begin to love your soul. And loving your soul is doing that which is correct. As Allah Jalla Wallace has called the aflaha man zakkaha. Indeed, he is successful or she is successful, the one purify what? What do you purify? Your nafs. Because Allah says, Right? And he swear by the soul which Allah Jalla wa Allah has fashioned it. And indeed, he was successful who purifies his soul. And he is corrupted, the one who what? Corrupts his soul. Right? So your nafs should be the first thing on your list when you start talking about you love yourself. I love myself. I know I put enough. I know I You love yourself? Then where are you in regards to your nafs? Do you oppress your nafs? Or do you free your nafs? As it comes in the hadith of Sahih Muslim, the Prophet said, each and every one of us every day have the opportunity to. Free our soul or to imprison our soul, to purify our soul or to corrupt our soul. Do you free your nafs? And the month of Ramadan, brothers and sisters, that's what it's about. That nafs is being free. You are suppressing your desires from your physical world. How food, drink, sexual relations play a bearing on your soul. How all of these different things can actually play a bearing on your soul. So what you're doing is you're freeing that nafs, giving it time to be free, even though you're in a physical experience. I hope you understand that. I didn't mean to add lip. I hope we catch that, right? So it's important that we show that because the qualities of the ibad that they do that. Those who spend their nights doing what? What are they doing? They're praying. They're offering du'a. What is the du'a they saying? What is they saying? رَبَّنَا صُرَفْ عَنَّا عَذَابَ جَهَنَّمْ Oh our Lord, protect us and avert from us the fire. Right? What's going to be in the fire? 
your nafs. Even though Allah is going to allow you to have flesh, but what's going to be in the fire? Protect us from that fire, right? And then Allah Jalla Wala goes on and mentions some other qualities that they have, that they are balanced. Even when it comes to their finances, even when it comes to their management skills, they are balanced. And then Allah mentioned three things that we stopped on, but alhamdulillah, is the things that which um, destroys a society. And these three things, if you think about it, they are those things which destroy the very fabric of society, if they are left unchecked. And that is the first being shirk. Allah Jalla Wa'ala tells us that shirk, those who do not call on Allah with Allah, another ilah. Because shirk, brothers and sisters, it destroys the alaqa, the connection that the human beings or Bani Adam has with their Lord when they start to set up rivals with Allah Jalla Wa'ala. And shirk, by the way, if it continues to run rampant, as we see, then what happens is folda, it's chaos. Do you understand? So it's important that we know that shirk is very detrimental to any society and any civilization once they started to commit shirk. Do you understand? Likewise, murder, if left unchecked, unjustifiably, murder also destroys the very fabric, fabric of society. Why? Because it brings about a lot of tension, a lot of dissension that is sown between Bani Adam because loved ones are being hurt or being slain, unjustifiable, which brings about revenge. Revenge which cannot somebody felt that you cannot really get revenge if i kill you and you kill someone from my family then the cycle goes on and continuously continuously as we see in chicago as we see in many of the different cities where a lot of the youth can't get the get back that they want and it's never be enough because you can't bring back the person who died you can't bring them back so it, it is catastrophic murder unjustifiably is catastrophic and it destroy whatever harmony in society that it has so Allah subhanahu wa prohibit that unless it's under certain circumstances where it is justifiable to do so. And it's under the law of Allah Azza wa Jal, as under Kisas, and we talked about those different things here that we mentioned within the tafsir. Also, we know that the next one kills the very fabric of society, which is Zinab. Something that we live in in our time is very, very, very prevalent. The very fabric of the Western societies, and even we can say in the Middle East, as a trinkle and spread, is that Zinab, for some reason or another, is the very catechist for all of us are being subjected to from what we watch, from what we see, from what we listen to. It makes it easy to say, you can choose who you want to be with, you can be with whoever you want to be with, be free, you can be uh, strict. And it removes the honor. It removes the honor. And a lot of people don't do that. There is no honor in a woman who gives herself up without no commitment. There's no honor in a man who gives himself up without being committed. There's no honor in a society who allows Zena to run rampant. There's no honor because why would I feel obligated or subjected to take care of the child that results from Zena? Why would I feel obligated and, right? And feel obligated to what? To be com and, and be committed to take care of someone who really I have no ties to. She like me, I like her, we enjoy each other's flesh, that's it. How many times have you seen a woman fall in love with a guy and the guy don't want to get married? She falls in love with the guy, he don't want to get married. He don't even feel the same way she feels. Okay, she's been giving her body to him, she's been doing this and this and that, but he doesn't feel the same way she feels. And she screams back and forth because she, she, she frustrated, she don't know what to do, but she don't want to let him go, right? It kills that society. Not only that, didn't we talking about Zena that happens with neighbors, happen with people in close proximities, people who are close, as we see with a lot of the different stuff that's happening. Even if you want to look at the celebrities' lives, which seem to be the topic on everybody's minds, even if you look at the Jada and the Will thing, if you look at, you know, the son, you know, and, and, his, and his friend coming over, and then Jada having a relationship with the, with the son's friend. You know, and lines being seen like it's being crossed, and all this whole different stuff happened. Zena, brothers and sisters, is filthy and it's nasty and it's repugnant. So, Allah, Jalla He mentioned three things which would destroy the core of society. You understand? You females, wallahi tallahi wallahi, your guardians is the ones who should be leading the charge with you, not yourself. You don't have it all. You don't know. You don't. You don't have it all. You understand. You females need to fear Allah and realize you don't have it all. Yeah, you might like that guy. 
and you might overlook a lot of the red flags with that individual. You might don't, you know, what I mean? you understand because you like that guy, and now you allow yourself to become attached to this individual, and he has no commitment to you, none whatsoever. You understand? Then if y'all have a child that results from this, not only are y'all under the anger of Allah Jalla wa Alam while you're doing it, so we want to be extremely careful. So the ibad rahman they stay away from the things that would destroy the very fabric of society. And that is shirk, that is qatil, murder, and that is zina. Okay? These three things destroys the fabric of society, which indicates to you that the sharia, that the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is about in preserving, right? And keeping the society intact and keeping the society harmony. Because think about it. You take away a lot from a person, if you think about it, if you're having zina with your neighbor. It might seem harmless, but it's really not harmless. Imagine you have a Xena with somebody's wife. Right? You have a Xena with somebody's wife. Look what's happening right now. How many cases you have seen in the news where the man gunned down the wife? Gunned down the ex, the ex guy. He guns down the guy she's dealing with, and, she gun, and he guns down her too. She's subjected to it just as well. So not saying that he's justifiable in doing his act, but just imagine what it does. Do you understand? The Khan, which we don't get. And, I, and it was crazy because I don't even like this individual who um, his words were being quoted, but somebody posted it, and it's from Nietzsche. He's a philosopher, and, you know, he's a Kafir, a shrimp Kafir. If you ever read his philosophy, I don't, I don't advise you to read his philosophy. But before, you know, I came into Islam, I was big on reading philosophy. And he was crazy with this concept of Superman and all this extra stuff. Not Superman as flying and everything, but man being God of himself. What a yalda billah, right? But one thing he made clear is that it's not in, in this statement that you have to understand because it is not that a person lies to you. It's the fact that the person betrayed you. It's that khan. So what's taking place is that you cannot have honor if you are doing uh, if you're betraying. This is why Allah Jalla tells us in the Quran, La Allah wa Rasul. Don't betray Allah and this messenger. Don't betray. You betray the trust. All right? Every time you step outside of those bounds. Do you understand? You're betraying something. So that betrayal hurts harder. And it plays a psychological effect on someone. Do you understand? Someone actually, you know, losing self-esteem in themselves. Losing the confidence that Allah Jalla Wala endowed them with. Right? They're losing that because they cannot fathom that the person they was with did what they have done. And they went that far. And it bothers them. And some people lash out. Only thing they know to lash out. Okay, you want to play me? You want to play me? Right? And then they don't know how to contain themselves. They don't know how to subdue their anger. And they turn right around and kill the person and then kill themselves while they yelled Allah. Now look at the result of what happened. The evil consequences of what took place because of the betrayal. Right? The betrayal. Because that's what it is. The zina steps out. It's the betrayal. So I commit khan with you. That's what I did. I betrayed you. I betrayed my trust. I betrayed my Lord. I betrayed this. And that's what happened. And then it kills the society because the betrayal happens. And any one of us is subjected to it. And we ask Allah Jalla to forgive us. Because we are just following our nest and at the same time not knowing the implications or understanding the ramifications of such an action. We don't understand it. So we make statements as, don't let no one tell you you can't be you or you can't be free to be yourself or that you got to be held down. No, won't you do the right thing and leave that person alone? How about that one? Won't you do the right thing and leave the individual alone so that way you don't betray them? And if you're going to go off on the deep end, you betray yourself. You understand? At best. But you don't betray the individual, which will leave the individual in shambles. Because this is what we have done to each other. We have destroyed each other on this type of level. So notice these three things that Allah Jalla Wala says that the Ibad rahman stay away from. Right? So Allah goes on next. He talks about the punishment that will be met it out for those who fall into these three things all right those who fall into these things, it's a punishment that will be met it out shaykh say mean rahmatullah ta'ala alayhi
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wa man yaf al dhalik. Right? So here, this tafsir of Sheikh Uthameen was taken from audio where the Sheikh was going over another scholar's tafsir and he would comment on that. So the scholar, he doesn't mention the name of the Sheikh that he's doing, the Mufassir, he's doing a commentary to his um, tafsir. So he says here, I wahid min hadi thalath. The Sheikh who he's doing the commentary to says that what it meant by and whosoever does that meaning who does one of these three things that were mentioned shirk murder or zina right yalqa atham right qala mufassir rahimallah wahid min al-thalatha fihi nadhar now shaykh they mean comments on the statement of the scholar of tafsir he says the statement of the scholar of tafsir here saying that is one from the three things that were mentioned he says there is speculation containing in this statement of his he says because the asl right the origin here what's being pointed out is that it is referring to everything that was mentioned and not to one of them so Allah Jalla is not saying if you do one sin from amongst the three sins I mentioned no everything that I mentioned if you do something yalqa athama Right, he says, فَيَكْتَدِ أَنْ يَكُونَ وَمَنْ يَفْعَلَ ذَلِكَ مَذْكُورٌ مِنْ دُعَاءٍ ذَيْعَيْنَ اللَّهِ وَقَاتِلِ النَّفْسِ وَزِينَ ثَلَاثَ يَلْقَى أَثَامَ. So Sheikh Taymiyyah says, whoever does anything that was mentioned, such as offer du'a to other than Allah, which is shirk, or take a soul unjustifiably, which is murder, or commit zina, if you've done any any of those things, not one of them, but if you've done any of those things, you've done all of those things, then you are يَلْقَى أَثَامَ, which you are thrown into sin. Then Allah Jalla wa'ala says, يُضَاعَفْ لَهُ الْعَذَابُ يَوْمَ كِيَامَةً وَيَخْلُودَ فِيهِ مُحَنَّةً Right? So not only one did you incur the sin, two, the punishment for you will be uh, doubled on the day of judgment, and three, you will enter the uh, 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 you will enter uh, forever or you will be in forever inside the hellfire disgrace. Alright? وَهَذَا لِي كَرَّرْنَاهُ مِنْ عَوْدِهِ عَلَى الْجَمْنِ نَسْلُ بِهِ مِنْ إِرَادَ سَيَأْتِ إِنْ دِكُولِ وَيَخْلُودَ فِيهِ Right, so he says when we get to the part about we we'll talk about some more of what we mentioned about all three of these things being together in regards to sub separate. He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he he says that here zina in and of itself is not one of those actions which requires a person to uh, remain in the hellfire forever. It's not an action from the actions, from the evidence we know, that if a person commits zina, they will be in the hellfire forever. Right? Unlike Qatl of murder Because Allah Jalla wa'ala He says In Surah An-Nisa Annahu mujibu li khulud Fi nar Wa sayati insha'Allah He says So he will mention that soon Soon insha'Allah He will mention the verse Hopefully and, and, and tell us about that But he says As a murder In Surah An-Nisa Allah talks about Wa man Wa man qatla Mu'minan Muta'amidan Fi Surah An-Nisa Whoever kills a believer Intentionally Fa jaza'uhu Allah talks about the jaza, the consequences, and he mentioned that the person will be in the fire forever. All right, but he doesn't say that about zina. So that's the point the sheikh is mentioned. He doesn't say that about zina, but he says about murder. Right? He says, um, Okay. He says so. The author says yalqa athama, the tafsir, the scholar of tafsir, ay ukuba. What it means by athama here is ukuba. Wa atham. Is the plural for the word Yeah, well, athama, yani uh uh as you say is the plural of yani um sins. But here it means punishment. it is mentioned in a singular form. Alright? Not in the plural form. Alright? It is mufrat. You and then he talks about according to the different um recitations, it could be recited different ways. Um he brings that point. But he says here that um he says Okay? He says, What it means by Allah would double it, meaning that that's something to repeat a thing. Meaning that its punishment will be multiplied or doubled. That is because whoever does these three things, which يعني, is the cause for this punishment, he joined partners with Allah, he commits murder, and وَمَعْلُومٌ أَنَّ أَسْبَابٍ إِذَا اجْتَمَعَ صَارَ لِكُلِّ وَاحِدٍ مِنْهَا أَثَرُهُ 
فمن فعل شيئا واحدا من ثلاث فعليه اثمه ومن فعل اثنين فعليه ما اثهما ومن فعل ثلاث فعليه اثمهن فهذا وجه تعيد so the shaykh says that if a person was to commit any of these sins that is mentioned then is an effect that will be left upon the person when they do it so for example if a person only did shirk all right there's an effect there and he occurred one sin if a person does both of the things the, out of the three that is mentioned shirk and murder then he occurs two sins and if a person uh, or two punishments rather if the person does all three of the things from those things then he will occur um, the extent and he said this is what it means by the tatiyith the um, um, the doubling here in the verse يُدَعَفُ لَهُ عَذَابِ يعني بمعنى واحد وهو أقوبة punishment يوم كيامه هو يوم الذي يبعث فيه الناس يوم كيامه brothers and sisters the day of standing is the day in which mankind will be resurrected and brought forth. وَسُمِيَ يَوْمَ كِيَامَ لِأَسْبَابِ الثَّلَاثِ Shaykh Uthameen said it has been given the name يَوْمَ كِيَامَ for three reasons. One, لِكِيَامَ nas مِنَ الْقُبُورِ Because the people will stand from their graves. وَإِقَامَةِ الْأَدَلِ This other reason is because justice will be established on that day. وَلِأَنُهُ تُقَامَ فِيهِ شَهَادَةً وَيَقُومَ أَشْهُدُ فِيهِ And also, the third thing he mentioned is that Therein will stand those to give witness to shahada wa yakumu ashadu fi. As Allah Jalla says, wa yoma yakumu ashad, meaning there will be the people who will give witness. Wa humu, and he says, who are the yakumu ashad? The people who will give witness. They are the angels, the messengers, likewise the uh, umm, the, the nations. Either sumiya yoma kiyamli hadi wujud thalat. He says, therefore, these three reasons. Uh, or these uh, three causes or means or why it is called Yom Qiyamah. Question, a rhetorical question to all of us. How many of us even knew that? Right? How many of us knew why it was called Yom Qiyamah? How many of us even given thought why it is, you know, referred to as Yom Qiyamah? How many of us even knew one of the reasons uh, the early man discussed why it is given the name Yom Qiyamah? All right? It's a rhetorical question. doesn't have to put in the comment section. Something to ask yourself with. Alhamdulillah. Right? He says, وَيَقْلُوتْ يَبْقَى فيه أي في العذاب. All right. So when Allah جل وعلا says ويخلد فيه مهانا, He says يبقو meaning that he will remain. يبقو. He will remain. There's no breakage here. It's going to remain there. فيه meaning in that torment. قال المفسر بجزم فتلين بدلا وبرعفهما استنافا. الفتلين يضاعف ويخلو. يعني أن فيه ما كرعتان. All right. <coughs> فليس فيها سوى قراءة واحدة وهي جزم لأنها جواب الشر وجوب الشر بد لا بد أن يكون مجزوما لكن فيها إشكال وأنا مفتوحة يلقى. alright so he goes into a grammatical benefit here in terms of the author using the fact that uh, there is جزم taking place and this is a jump to when we talk about Arabic grammar because Allah says wa main yaf al and he placed that sukun there so we're not going to go too deep into that but notice you will see hadiths like that as well where you will see the word has been cut. They call it mahduf. What normally should be there been dropped off. And that normally happens because we have what they call a jawabu shark. All right, which is a, a cause or reason, a stipulation. All right. This etc. etc. So it be cuts off. Whoever does this, does that. It becomes cut off, insha'Allah ta'ala. And I don't know if the hadith that I use uh, is more sufficient for that in terms of whoever believed in Allah in the last day, they should speak only those words um, that remains. Um, good or remain silent. Tayyip. The shaykh, he says, وَيَقْلُوا فِيهِ هَذِهِ خَارِجَةٌ عَنْ شِبَاءَ He says, أَشَبِيحَاتِهَا فَيَجُوزُ فِيهَا وَجْهَانِ فِيهِ بِالْمَدْ وَفِيهِ مُحَانَ بِالسَّلَّةِ so he's talking about the way that it can be recited when you say uh, fihi. You can say fihi with med, fihi, or you can you know understand uh, connect be doing med without the med very aslaha. Wa ma fihi muhana al bil med fadi ala kilaf. All right. In terms of the recitation of how to recite it. All right. How to recite that particular verse when you say wa yakhlud fihi muhana, and they say awesome um, from um. Asim and Hafs, the one that we normally recite, commonly known that we recite, we don't use the med. We don't extend it. We don't say fihi muhan like he is fihi muhanab. That's the one we normally use. So we don't go too far and elongate that according to the rules of Hafs and Asim. 
all right, according to the rules of Hafs, right, who took from Al Asim, his teacher, in regards of the Kira'a, in regards to that. What Tayyib? What Tayyib? Hada Qusur. Ala Anaha Al Halab al Dumiya. He says, here, Lianaha Li Akrab Akrab, Illa Anahu Lam Yufasr Bi Ma'na Muhana. When I let Tafsir Kalima Ahwaju Mina Ila Arabia, Kama Hua Lakin Lana Fama Ma'naha Fama Ma'na Muhana. A Muhana Muhtakaru Dalil. Yani Muhtarakin Dalil. La Yukama Lahu Waznun Wala Ikram. So Shikha Timin says that the meaning of Muhan is someone who is muhtakar, who is like a uh, disgrace, uh, humiliated, brought low. Muhtakar in dalilin. Right? La yukama lahu waznun wala ikram. He wouldn't have no station nor would he have any honor. Now, look how Allah Jalla wa'ala after mentioning that severe, stern, strictest punishment that would take place for anyone who does these things. Look how Allah Jalla wa'ala opens the bab of mercy for the people afterwards. Allah says, إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَا وَعَمِلَ عَمِلًا صَالِحًا فَأُولَٰئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيَّاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمًا Look at the door, brothers and sisters, of Allah's Rahmah, which we cannot even fathom. We can't fathom Allah's mercy, brothers and sisters. As Allah tells you that those who fall into these things, those who commit these things, there is a severe punishment for them. But the door of Tawbah is still open for them, which, which alleviates and which actually excludes that Allah is oppressive because he still leaves the door open. He says, except for he or she who turns to Allah in repentance, but it's two conditions with that. One, they turn to Allah repentance, meaning they turn with amen. They believe in Allah Jalla wa'ala. They have to be believers. Illa man taba wa amana. And they believe in Allah Jalla wa'ala. You understand? Not they make tawbah and they don't believe in Allah. No, they believe. They have to have iman. He says, Illa, illa man taba wa amana. And believe. And what else he says? What's the other one? Wa amila amalan saliha. And they do righteous deeds. Why? These are the ones Allah says. He's going to exchange their evil deeds for good deeds. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever all forgiven, most merciful. So we see that Allah opens that door for you. Even after all of this, if you felt into it, it's not the end of the world. You still have hope. You see that? Look at Allah Jalla wa'ala mercy. Look at his rahmah. You see this mercy? That he will exchange your evil deeds. This is why we cannot be so hard on people. You don't know what they have done. You don't know the tawbah they have made. Do you understand? If Allah have guided them in the first place to make tawbah. If you have guided them to iman. How many individuals have did fisq? They have did a lot of different wrong and disobedience in their lives. And then you see them years later. He's a practicing Muslim. She's a practicing Muslimah. Oh, I remember that person was crazy. Yeah, remember that one time? How many times do you see that? How often do you see that? Henceforth, the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, where the Prophet ﷺ said, Waladi, I swear by the one in whose hands, or one that there's no another ilah besides him. Right? When he says what? Inna ahadakum la ya'malu bi amali ahl al jannah. Or he says, in the verse he says, the ahl al nar. So the, the, the Prophet said, Indeed, I swear that if indeed one of you would do the actions of the people of the fire, so much so that between him and it is a hand span, and then that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed for him or her will be overwritten, and it will cause the individual to do the deeds of the people of the paradise, and he will enter it, and vice versa. So one, one of you will do the deeds of the people of paradise, start off good, beautiful good, right? And then that which is overwritten, what, what happens? Then he start doing the deeds of the people of the hellfire and he calls to enter it. The ulama said that this hadith indicates what? The other hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu where he said the actions are by his conclusions. You can start off good. How many people hal have changed? And this also gives us something to look at. You don't have to be so shadeed, akhi. The brother made tawbah. Get with the times. He made tawbah. With your rahmah. And another principle we can take from this. Look at the principle. 
as it comes in a beautiful hadith of the Prophet where he says فَأَتْبَأْ follow up a evil deed with a good deed what does it do? it erases it it removes it as Allah says إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُدْهِبُ سَيِّئَاتِ بِالْحَسَنَاتِ or حَسَنَاتِ Allah Jalla wa'ala removes the evil deeds with the good deeds these are things you can do okay you was doing some wickedness how about start doing some righteousness it removes the wickedness you were doing look what Allah just said about them if they make tawbah they have iman and they do righteous deeds Allah is going to what? He's going to exchange their evil deeds for good deeds He's going to exchange so the zina that they might have fallen it's not there no more. The murder that they might have felt into, it's not there no more. The shirk which they might have felt into, it's not there no more. Why? Because what did they have to do? They have changed. They have iman. They have made toba. As long as the door of toba is open, it's not for you and I to close it on someone. We're not Allah Jalla wa'ala. You can't close the door of toba on nobody. You can't tell somebody there's no forgiveness for him. Henceforth, you don't understand the hadith from the man who killed 99 men. What happened? The monk was telling him there was no hope for you. So the monk became one on his list. So he killed him. Do you not understand? As the early man said, ignorance can lead to death. As we've seen in that hadith. So he turned around and killed him and put him at part of his body count. You're telling this man there is no hope for you. He killed 99 people. There is no hope for you. None whatsoever. You're a wicked individual. Think about that. We have to be careful, brothers and sisters. We're not a law. You don't know the extent of Allah's mercy. You don't know Allah, the extent of Allah's forgiveness. You don't know. What you may not forgive, trust me. Trust me. Allah may will. You don't know. You don't know. So don't be so hard on one another. Don't be so hard on yourself. If you want to crawl out of that miserable wretch of guilt because it's a bag of guilt and it's what the shaitan wants you to, to lean on to make it seem like you can't approach Allah or that he's unapproachable or that you can't be forgiven that the act that you did is unforgivable La, the way you crawl out is what Allah just said here إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ right? عَمِلًا صَالِحًا except for those who turn to Allah and I want to give you something that the ulama explained Shaykh Uslam Taymiyyah he mentioned that the toba should start bil qalb. The toba should start in heart, not bil lisan. The toba should not, brothers and sisters, start from the tongue before it starts from the heart. It should start from the heart. This was going to bring about the sincereness of the toba. All right. How many of us, when we make toba, we really, really, really feel it here in our qalb that we really feel it in our heart that we was wrong for that. We're remorseful for that. We don't want to return back to that. How many of us? And how many are oftentimes we have committed toba just with our, our tongue? Right? I want to keep the relationship going. Or, you know, I just want to, I don't want to argue about it. So forth and so on. I apologize. Yeah, I was wrong. But don't feel it at all in the call. What's this going to do? It's insincere. And what's going to happen? Allah knows what's in your heart. But it's insincere. You're going to turn right back around and do something even worse. Or do the same thing. Exactly. No matter who we are, if we're not sincere in October, we're going to be doing the same thing. And if we are sincere in October, Allah can forgive us for that, even if we wind up doing it later. Do you understand? I mean, if we repeat it again later, Allah can forgive us for the sincerity of the Toba at that time. So be sincere in your Toba. Start with the Qalb. Start here. Fill it here. Ya Allah, a stuck for me. Forgive you. If you want to take down and say somebody is the worst individual on the earth, the first one that should come to your mind is yourself. The first one that should come to your mind about the most worst individual on the earth is yourself. If that doesn't come up, something is wrong. Because this is how the seller felt about themselves. Yes, we give you narration after narration if you want it. This is how the seller felt about themselves. If you want to feel about someone being the worst on the face of this earth, then look, start with yourself. I am the worst when he has been there. The man came to the Prophet ﷺ. He said, Ya Rasulullah, inni munafiq. This is what he said to the Prophet ﷺ. He says, inni munafiq. Not that I, I have some wickedness with me because I thought a bad thought. He says, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, indeed I am a hypocrite. And to be a hypocrite, brothers and sisters, there are certain things that you have to have. 
enumerating body before you place a hook on somebody to be a hypocrite. Here is a companion coming to the Prophet Sallam, telling the Prophet Sallam, indeed I am Munafiq. The Prophet said, What makes you what makes you think that you are Munafiq? He says, Because when I am with you, Ya Rasulullah, I remember Allah, my iman is high. Look who he's saying why he's a hypocrite. I want you to pay attention to this, right? He says, When I'm with you, my iman is high, right? I remember Allah Jalla often. But when I'm home with my family or so forth like that, I'm distracted and I, I, you know, my iman don't feel like it's there. So he felt like he was a hypocrite because of that. The Prophet was telling the man that it's a time for this and it's a time for that. Balance! It's a time for this and it's a time for that. You're not a munafiq because your iman is not at this high state when you are moving about with your family. Allah ordered you to have family. Allah ordered you to have this. You're not a munafiq. Because you're not doing this and that. This is what they felt as they being a hypocrite. But look how he thought about himself. He thought worse of himself. Not, I'm going to think of this individual being the worst. Everyone but, but you. You ever see that? And that's the new word we got to do. The narcissist, right? That's a narcissist, right? Look at the traits of the narcissist. That's what he does. Everyone, no accountability. Everyone is off it but you. You ever see somebody like that? Well, lying. We have a group of people that's like that. We have a group of people that have been causing havoc in the communities for years. You ever notice there's no mistakes they make? None. How? Allah Jalla already told you that it, everyone, the Prophet already said it, Kulli Banu Adam Akta. The Prophet said it, Kullu. It, it includes everybody. I, 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 I'm lost. He says, everyone from the son of Adam. He didn't say one or these are people excluded. He says, Kullu Bani Adam. Everyone from Bani Adam, Qatta, are sinners. Fakhairu Qatta, Tawabin. And the best of those who sin are those who make repentance. But he says, everyone. He didn't say this one or that one. But I'm kind to understand how a group of people come up and say there is no mistakes with us. No mistakes? <laughs> that ain't narcissist. There's no mistake with you. And we have people like that, whether it's in relationships, whether people in uh, business transactions, whether people are partners, whether people are co-workers, whether people are neighbors. But we have people that you come across who don't have no accountability. Whatsoever. No accountability. So when they think of the worst, they think of other people and they they never come across their mind. That's not the attributes of a believer. The Ibadur Rahman. Brothers and sisters, they begin with themselves. The Ibadur Rahman begins with themselves. They realize their faults and their flaws first before they realize the faults and the flaws of mankind that's how the ibadur rahman move because this is all about tawad there all about being humble all about being truthful to oneself is that you come out and understand that this month supposed to help us with that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to endure us with these righteous actions i mean and inshallah ta'ala the next time we go over this we'll, we'll go over the tafsir of shaykh mean on these two verses which deals with the tawbah and he's going to set down the conditions as we should know them of the conditions of Toba. But I just wanted to elaborate there for us to understand how merciful Allah is. He just gave us, he just gave us doom. You know, fright. He just gave us doom. Those who do these acts, they're going to be in the hellfire. The torment is going to be, uh, the torment is going to be multiplied. Then he turns right back around and said, it's hope for these people. <laughs> Allahu Akbar It's hope I love that man Because it teaches how to act with one another man We make mistakes man It's going to happen You're going to make a mistake That brother is not going to walk the straight and narrow That sister is not going to walk the straight and narrow She's going to fall short If she don't fall short I'm going to look at her like she got two heads If he doesn't fall short I'm going to look Why? Because he's from Banny Adam I don't know nobody from Banny Adam that walks straight And don't make mistakes even the Prophet Sallam sins past, present, and present. But guess what? It still says sins. Past, present, and future sins were forgiven. Do you not get it? You have to understand. Even the prophets and the messengers have mistakes. Look at the hadith, the long hadith. What happened? When they went to Nur, and Nur remembered the sin he did. They went to Musa, they remembered the sin he did. They went to Ibrahim. Think about it. No, it wasn't continuous and it wasn't outrageous like, like, like that. We're not saying that, but still, just think about it. We are not perfect human beings. We have flaws. Won't you have some mercy, man? Have some mercy. We don't even have it in this day and age. Have everybody want to be the hardest person on the face of the earth now. That's the culture we live in right now. You got to be so hard. 
So extremely hard. Hard with yourself, hard with your people. You're just pretending. You're not hard. The people who act hard is the softest. Jihad is called today or tomorrow. You ain't going to show up. Why? Because you can't get up for Fajr. That's, come on, let's keep it real. You understand the difference? So let's stop acting as if we're hard. You understand? Being hard is being firm and resolved on your principles. You don't have to act like you're tough. If you're about that, you're about that. And it will come out when it's time to come out. In its proper place. But you don't have to go around acting so hard. No, I can't smile, Lockie. I guess the Prophet Muhammad said smile is a sadaqa. Oh, you can't smile, right? Oh, I, you know, I ain't got no mercy. This is how we acting, running around. Do you see? And last thing I want to mention, this last thing that destroy us is uh, communicating those issues or addressing those issues instead of sweeping them under the rug. One of the biggest things that we have in our community. And, and I believe that this extends to a lot of other communities, not just the blacks, not just the, the whites, but a lot of people deals with these problems. And that is never addressing the issue. Instead of apologizing, what do we do? Oh, you want to get something to eat? Right? We start talking again, or let's go over here. How you feel about this? Instead of apologizing. Instead of addressing or acknowledging the issue that brought the tension or the dissension in the first place, we just sweep it under the rug. Guess what happened when you do that? You're creating a monster. And you don't realize that. You're creating a monster. Somebody's going to implode. That's what's going to happen. Because no one is feeling as though it's being addressed. The issue is not being addressed. You're just doing like this. Throwing it under the rug. And we do that. Right? And we think that this has become the norm. This is toxic. We think that all of this is becoming the norm. An individual comes and he says, listen, let's have a communication. Let's see what we went wrong at. Let's, let's, let's deal with this issue. The other person shut down. They don't want to talk about it. Right? But then they want to act like it never exists. Where do you get this stuff from? We want to act like it never exists. Oh, you weren't just doing something, something. Oh, no. That never existed. We're not even going to talk about it. It's not there no more. Let's move on. We can't move on. Newsflash. There is no moving on if that's not addressed. But this is what we have done in our communities. This is what we have done in our relationships. We have done this on numerous occasions. Even the children is mimicking these issues of not getting themselves together to address the problems that's in front of them so that they can move on. Islam is about shura, brothers and sisters. Got a whole surah called shura. Islam is about consultation, communication. The Prophet Muhammad consulted with his wives. Islam is about that. Why you don't want to communicate effectively? Why hide it? Why throw it under the rug? Why? That's not going to make it go away because you don't acknowledge it. Where you get that from? That's false illusion. You not acknowledge it doesn't make it go away. You acknowledge it makes it go away. What do Allah Jalla says in the Quran? What, is, what, 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 what did that i'tiraf mean? They acknowledge their sins. <laughs> That's what i'tiraf is. Allah Jalla says, فَعْتَدِرُوا I mean, فَعْتَرِفُوا That they what? They acknowledge their sins. <laughs> he wasn't going to let them get away with it. He bring it to account. You remember you did such and such? You remember you did such and such? You're not getting away with it. You're going to be addressed. It's not swept under the rug. It's not forgotten. It's not overlooked. You're going to be addressed. فَعْتَرِفُوا We're going to have to acknowledge that. So if we got to acknowledge our sins, we should acknowledge our mistakes. And hopefully if we can acknowledge our mistakes, we can have a communication that's effective and we can get over those things. There are brothers who don't speak to each other in the communities right now due to a lot of stuff that happened that never was addressed. There are sisters likewise. There are family members. I watch it with my mom and my aunt all the time. They go years, I'm talking about two years, three years, not speaking to each other and not knowing how to just come and, com and communicate effectively to handle the situation so they can get past it. And it might not have been something major. It could have been something minute, but it became major because they did not express a communication. Brothers and sisters, Islam is perfect. The people of Islam aren't. But Islam gives us the means to deal with our day-to-day -day lives, everything. So let's start to embrace it, inshallah ta'ala. And hopefully we can do it in this month. Inshallah ta'ala, prepare for the last 10. Get your in energy up. Whatever we said that was incorrect, inshallah ta'ala, from our translation today was from ourselves. We and from the shaitan, whatever we said is correct, from Allah jalla ala. Subhanakallahum, yuhamdi, ash, hadun, ala, ant, astakwa, zubi, lake, jasakallah, kaim, fatun, in, as always. Assalamu alaikum.